Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is he risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Welcome to Good Shepherd for our online worship. And even though we're shut in our homes, we praise God that his word continues to go out outside our doors. And today, we have a lot of doubts about what the future may hold for us. Today, we're going to hear about doubting Thomas mm -hmm. and see what we can learn from Thomas and apply that to us today. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Again, we turn to God's word for our opening sentences. Alleluia. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death, Death no, no longer, longer has dominion over him. Alleluia. Alleluia. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Alleluia. 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 We now confess our sins. Lord, you are favorable to your land. You restored, you restored the, the fortunes, fortunes of Jacob. Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people. You, you covered, covered all, all their sin. sin. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and, and grant, grant us, us your salvation. salvation. Let us then confess our sins unto our gracious Lord. Risen Jesus, in, in humility, humility and with and repentant heart, hearts, we, we come, come before, before you. you. With shame and regret, we admit and confess our sinfulness. We have many doubts about all that's happening in your world. We have doubts about the future. We have doubts about where you are in all of this. Give us eyes of faith to see how you're working through this. Help us to see your continued love and care for us. Strengthen us. Grow our faith. Help, Help us, us not, not to fear, fear but, to but to trust, trust that you, we are in your nail-pierced hands. Forgive us, Lord, and have, have mercy, mercy on us. us. The risen Jesus stood among his fearful and doubting followers and greeted them with the words, Peace be with you. Jesus speaks these same words to us today, that we have peace with him through the forgiveness that he gives to us. Therefore, as a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our first reading is from 1 Peter, chapter 1, verses 3 to 9. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith more precious than gold that perishes through it, it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you, as the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. If you withhold forgiveness from anyone, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, 
and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen yes, indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Imagine a group of people who are stuck staying at home. They're at home, maybe, maybe it's your household, you're thinking about other family members or your friends. It's a scary world outside those doors. We've been warned, really told, that we are to stay inside to stay safe. It's a scary world because that invisible coronavirus may be lurking anywhere and everywhere outside our doors. It may be in the person that we meet. It may be on a doorknob. It may be at our workplace. Staying home is a safe place to be. Imagine another group of people who are stuck inside as well. It's a scary world outside those doors for them as well. For us, our shelter in place, it's not self-imposed. Our local officials tell us that we are to stay at home for our own safety. This other group of people, they're inside because they're afraid of what's outside. These are the followers of Jesus after his death and resurrection. They're afraid not of some microscopic virus that they can't see. They're afraid of what they can see. The Jewish religious leaders, those who crucified Jesus. Before talking about this some more, I want to put this into context a little bit. That last Sunday, for Easter Sunday, we read from Mark's Gospel account. And I pointed out during the sermon that in Mark's Gospel account, no one sees Jesus early on Easter morning. Today we're reading from John's Gospel, and if we would back up a little bit and see what John writes about in his Easter morning account, John's theme of his Gospel is about seeing. And so in John's Easter morning account, some women, including Mary Magdalene, they go to the tomb, and she sees that the stone has been rolled away. So Mary runs and tells Peter and John, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have laid him. Peter and John run, they really kind of race to go to the tomb, and they see the linen cloths, the grave clothes inside. They see that Jesus isn't there. They don't quite understand the scripture about Jesus rising from the dead, and they return to their homes. Mary Magdalene is still lingering at the garden tomb area. She sees some angels. Then she sees Jesus, but she thinks he's the gardener. But then Jesus reveals himself to her. Mary goes and tells the disciples, I have seen the Lord. She's an eyewitness to his resurrection. Even though Mary Magdalene had told the followers of Jesus that she had seen the Lord, we find that later that evening, the disciples are all together in a locked room, locked down for fear of the Jews. They saw what happened to Jesus. 
Peter and John are part of that self-imposed lockdown as well. They're afraid of what's outside those doors. But one guy's not there. It's the Apostle Thomas. Jesus somehow appears to them even though the doors are locked. Now we're used to special effects with movies, and so we might picture this, that the risen Jesus somehow maybe like walks through the locked door or walks through the wall or something like that. Maybe, and we're not told how exactly it happens, maybe the door just swings open on its own and Jesus walks right in. Now there's biblical precedent for that. If you look in your Bibles, Acts chapter 12, Peter was in prison, uh, chains drop off of his uh, wrists and feet, an angel leads him out of the prison, they get to the city gate, an iron gate, and the gate just opens by itself. Like I said, I, we don't know exactly how Jesus got in there, but consider this option that Jesus was in that locked room all the time with them. They just couldn't see him. And then Jesus graciously reveals himself to them. There may have been some doubters in that group uh, that first Easter evening, because Jesus, when he goes in there and says, peace be with you, he shows them his hands and his side. You know, we'll hear more about that with Thomas. But they're in there, they're afraid. Jesus reveals himself, even the, the nail marks, the spear mark. And these guys were afraid to venture outside. But somehow, Thomas was maybe brave enough that he was outside, ventured outside. And we don't know what he was doing or why he wasn't there with them. Maybe he was going the grocery run that evening. Thomas doesn't believe when he comes back and they tell him what had happened. Maybe they should have asked Jesus that maybe they could get a selfie with them, that they could show to Thomas later as proof. Maybe Thomas thought that they were pulling a fast one on him, maybe pranking him or something, but this isn't something to joke about. Maybe Thomas believes that they saw Jesus in some way, like maybe as a ghost appearing to them, but Thomas certainly didn't believe that flesh and blood Jesus was right there in the room with him. Sometimes people are remembered for certain things that they did. When you think about the apostles, you know, think about Judas. You know, what do we remember about Judas? Well, the one thing that probably most people would say is he betrayed Jesus. He's the guy who sold Jesus out. How about Thomas? What do we remember about Thomas? Most of us would be hard-pressed to, to think of anything besides what we have in this gospel account, that Thomas is the doubter. He doubted that Jesus appeared to the other disciples after his resurrection. But Thomas, when we think about it, Thomas was a faithful follower of Jesus. Thomas was a guy who went all in, gave up everything to follow his Lord. And yet, this Thomas, this faithful follower of Jesus, we remember him as a doubter. What if you were remembered as a doubter. Maybe you, you've doubted that Jesus was really in control of his creation, especially with all this coronavirus that's going on. Maybe you've doubted in Jesus' love and care for you as this continues. What if I was known as Doubting Skip or we had Doubting Larry or Doubting Julie? How would you like to have that as a nickname? Here are some things that are recorded in scriptures, other things about Thomas, and these are both from John's Gospel. First from John chapter 11. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus has died, and for your sake I am glad that I was not there, 
so that you may believe. But let us go to him. So Thomas, called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. Thomas here doesn't doubt, but rather shows devotion and courage. Then a few chapters later, John chapter 14, Jesus says, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. The seeing things, seeing Jesus is seeing the Father. As you can see from these scripture readings, John's gospel theme isn't though just about seeing, it's really about believing. Remember I was talking about Jesus being in the room with the disciples that whole time even though the room was locked. Jesus somehow knew that Thomas didn't believe. It isn't like after that first Easter evening, Jesus leaves them. You know, Thomas comes back. He doesn't believe. And so someone goes and searches out to find Jesus and says, Jesus, Thomas, when he came back, he didn't believe. And it wasn't like when Jesus shows up a week later that Jesus somehow appears through the locked door again. Someone goes up to him immediately and says, hey, Thomas, he's here with us now. You better you know, tell him about the unbelieving stuff. But Jesus knew that Thomas didn't believe. We have a theological term, it's called omniscience, that Jesus is all-knowing. You know, as God, he's all-knowing, knows everything. And so Jesus knows that Thomas didn't believe. No one needed to tell him. We may tend to think that seeing is believing. Maybe we think that if I would have only been there with Jesus, that I would have been able to see with my own eyes, you know, to touch myself, you know, to touch and you know, just experience this like the disciples did, that things would be so much easier if we would have been there with those apostles. But we hear, we heard on Holy Thursday, Peter denied Jesus. He was right there with Jesus during his ministry. Thomas was there with Jesus. He had his doubts. The apostles, they all had their doubts. They all struggled with all of this. Have you ever had a moment that you just found something that was just so hard to believe that you had to see it for yourself? I have a picture of my family on the top of the World Trade Center. We showed this picture to our son Michael a couple of weeks ago. We were not talking about this gospel reading or anything, but it was a picture that was in his baby book. He's one and a half. He's the little guy in the picture, not so little anymore. The picture was taken about a month before the terrorist attacks of September 11th. When the attacks occurred, it was one of those times where you remembered where you were and what you were doing when you heard the news. I was in St. Louis at seminary and I was actually in a preaching class early in the morning. And someone interrupted the class, opened the door and said something had happened in New York and other places, terrorist attack. And so when the class was over, I called Julie, uh, had to find a phone, didn't have phones in her pockets back then. And she told me that one of the Twin Towers was down. I found that hard to believe. She said that an airplane had crashed in, it was on fire, there was all this smoke and things. And I said, there's no way that 
that tower could be down. Maybe the smoke is obscuring the, the, the building or something like that. Then after I hung up, I went and found the TV in the student lounge, and when I saw it, seeing was believing. Thomas says to his friends that he wants to see for himself. Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger in the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Jesus knew that Thomas had his doubts. But Jesus appears to them again the next week, again with the doors being locked, and Jesus comes to restore Thomas. Jesus doesn't come to give Thomas a guilt trip or to make him feel bad. Jesus comes so that Thomas will believe. I love this artist's depiction of Thomas there with Jesus that day. We see Jesus taking a hold of Thomas's wrist and like guiding his finger. Here, Thomas, touch my, my side where the spear went through. I always wonder if Thomas, if this is actually how it happened, if Thomas was kind of pulling back away, that he, he saw and believed, and he's trying to pull away, you know, embarrassed even. Jesus appeared to his followers in their self-imposed confinement. Just like Jesus knew that Thomas was struggling with doubt, he's well aware of your struggles with your doubt as well. Thomas then, he says, my Lord and my God. Thomas makes this beautiful confession of his faith. Maybe we should call him confessing Thomas or believing Thomas rather than doubting Thomas because Thomas, through these words, my Lord and my God, worships the risen Jesus right then and there. Jesus then says to Thomas, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Blessed are you. Blessed are you who haven't seen and believed. Blessed are you who confess Jesus as Thomas did, my Lord and my God. John's Gospel begins with saying that Jesus is the Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. God promises that where His Word is, that that's where He is. Where Jesus is, that's where His Word is. So the risen Jesus, the Word of life, is with you now in your homes, whether your doors are locked or not. The risen Jesus is here as we worship in this relatively empty sanctuary. Because his word is here, that means Jesus is here with us. My prayer is that you will see Jesus through eyes of faith and believe that he is with you now and always, no matter what you're going through. At the end of our gospel account, John writes, now Jesus did many other things in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Jesus was talking about you and me, that we have life in his name, that we have life now, and we still have that eternal life yet to come. A mother with three young boys noticed that one of her sons had broken one of her rules. She didn't know which one did it, so she talked to them separately, tried to get them through some questioning, interrogation, to confess which one it was. But each of them said, it wasn't me, Mom, not me. When it was time to go to bed, Mom told her boy, she said that I'm going to bed now, and when I say my prayers, I'm going to ask Jesus which one of you broke my rules. Do you think that maybe one of you boys want to tell me now before I ask Jesus about this? So the mom waited and she waited, still got nothing from them. 
Then one of the boys says, I think we'll wait to see what Jesus says. Jesus, of course, knew which one did it. Just like Jesus knew that Thomas didn't believe, even after the other disciples told him that they had seen him with their own eyes. Jesus knows all of our failings. Jesus knows all of our doubts. In fact, it was because of all of our failings and because of all of our doubts that Jesus willingly went to the cross for us to take the punishment that we deserve. And so we confess our sins because Jesus loves us and cares for us and he always wishes to restore us, just like he restored Thomas. Maybe you may have some doubts about how Jesus could love you, as sinful as you are. You know things about yourself that no one else knows about, but Jesus knows. Maybe you've done something that you still have your doubts about whether Jesus can forgive you or not. We see on the cross, and we believe because Jesus died on that cross, that Jesus has taken away each and every one of our many sins. Yes, Jesus knows all about every one of our sins, but Jesus also knows that he took each of those sins to the cross with him. They're done. Your sins are buried in that tomb. Jesus comes to you today to restore you. See and believe that the risen Jesus loves you and forgives you. And there's no doubt about it. You may have a lot on your mind right now. I certainly do. You may have doubts about the future. You may have doubts about your job, about your health, or about what businesses may open. You may have doubts about when you'll get to see your loved one again who you're unable to visit right now. You may have doubts about when we'll be able to gather in worship to be here in person together again. We may wonder what life will be like after this shelter-in-place order has been lifted. And it may be hard for us to see that life is going to get better anytime soon. Thomas had his doubts, and the risen Jesus restored him. I pray that you will never doubt that the risen Jesus loves you. That you will never doubt that Jesus is right there for you right now in your time of confinement and isolation. And not only never doubt, but always believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. May you always see the risen Jesus as Thomas did and confess him as my Lord and my God. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We now take a moment as we remember our tithes and offerings. Thank you to all who have been uh, sending in or, or online uh, making your offerings. Um, you're, you're a real blessing to our ministries here. Thank you. We now continue with the prayers of God's people. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We pray for the whole Christian church, that the peace of God dwell upon it, and that the Spirit of God work through it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer and grant us your peace. We pray for the nations of the world and their leaders, that you would bless them with wisdom as they make decisions to keep citizens safe and to prevent the spread of this virus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer and grant us your peace. We pray for all your people, Lord, that even though we can't gather together in person, that we are together through the working of your Holy Spirit as you gather us around your word. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer and grant us your peace. We pray for those who actively work to keep us safe. We especially pray for those serving in health care professions. Bless them, Lord, and keep them safe as they sacrificially serve. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer 
and grant, grant us your, your peace. peace. We pray for those whose lives are in need of a special measure of peace and comfort, the sick and the hospitalized, the unemployed, and all who mourn. We pause and lift up before you all those who are on our hearts and minds right now. Help them, Lord, and all of us to never doubt your love and care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer and grant us your peace. Amen. We are bold to pray now as our risen Jesus had taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We now have a called it an Easter poem. It was a devotion written by Pastor Don Schaefer. Uh, Pastor Don preached here back on Reformation Sunday. You remember him? He's uh, part of our Southeastern District leadership team. And so for each of the slides, I'm going to read the first slide and we'll alternate pastor people. Each slide, I'll do the first one. Now. It was dark and quiet in that place. The only sound was hushed breathing. In that darkness, a family was sheltering in place, because what lay beyond the locked door was a terrifying world recently turned upside down. Scared of what was, fearful of what might be, they sat paralyzed and confused. Assumptions and expectations which had comforted and directed their life, now mocked as a fanciful illusion. Suddenly one stood among them, whose presence and voice they recognized. How he had entered the space they did not know, but why he was there became clear. Peace be with you, he said, and indeed it was. His words freed those who felt captive, they re-entered the world beyond the door with courage and grace enough to push beyond all fears and the world would never be the same again. Those who believed in him on that first Easter initiated a change moment which yet goes on. This anniversary of that Easter finds us now as they were then. If our hearts are open enough to trust, he yet comes to us behind our locked doors. The risen Christ is still among us, his promise of grace still available. Through the words we read in isolation and the voices of others we hear through media, we're encouraged to yet believe. When we emerge from our enforced Sabbath, let us in intend to live by faith over fear, enlightened and enabled to help others know the joy we have found, so that they too may be free to live and die with hope. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is Christ risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace as you serve our risen Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. God's blessings to you.